Yes, guys, turn to question number 19. Capital structure of lot limited as on 31st March 2010 is as under. Equity share capital is 10, 10% preference share capital of 5 and 15% debentures of 8. Reserves and surpluses for everything given in lakhs. Lot limited earns a profit of 5 lakhs annually on an average before deduction of interest on debentures and income tax which works out to be 40%. Normal return on equity shares which are similarly placed is 12% provided. That means it would have been taken as 12% if the profit after tax covers fixed interest and fixed dividend at least 3 times. The capital gearing ratio is 0.75. The yield on shares is calculated at 50% of profits distributed and 5% of undistributed profits. Lot Limited has been paying, <clears throat> paying equity dividend regularly at the rate of 10%. So, this is the information given to us. We have to start valuation of the share. Now, whenever we are talking about this type of valuation of the shares, there is nothing given regarding your net assets to be calculated there. So, what we have to calculate is check your point number C. Yield on share is calculated at 50% of profits distributed and 5% of undistributed profits. Now such type of problems we use yield based method like dividend yield and earnings yield. Here also we calculate value per share on the same basis. We say value per share is equal to yield per share divided by NRR. If it was dividend yield method, value per share is dividend per share by NRR. Earnings yield method, earnings per share divided by NRR. Same way, yield per share divided by NRR now. And he's saying that yield is to be calculated at 50% of profits distributed and 5% of undistributed profits. We can calculate yield per share. But the problem here is with the NRR part. Because NRR is talking about NRR of an equity share company similarly placed is 12% provided. That means if these two conditions are satisfied, then I can take 12%. If these two conditions are not satisfied, then we have to adjust for the trend. If profit after tax covers fixed interest and fixed dividend at least three times, that means if it is covering three times, I'll take 12. If it is covering less than three, then understand whether it is favorable or unfavorable. Profit after tax covers fixed interest and fixed dividend. So if it is less than 3, it will be taken as unfavorable. It is not covering 3 times. Then I will have to add 12% plus something. If it is exceeding 3, let us say it is going to 4 or 4.5 or 5, whatever it is. In such cases, I will say that the NRR will be slightly lower. Same way capital gearing ratio. What is a capital gearing ratio? Equity funds divided by Fixed interest and dividend bearing securities. So equity funds divided by, uh, sorry, fixed dividend and interest bearing securities is 0.75. That means basically is expecting that the dividend and equity, sorry, dividend, fixed dividend and interest bearing securities should be higher than the equity funds by 0.75. Let's say for suppose my ratio is less than 0.75. If it becomes less than 0.75, it means that your preference shares and dividend uh, and debentures that is fixed interest and dividend bearing securities are more than your equity funds. If they are more, think from the equity shareholders perspective, risk is more. So I'll have to add it. Let's say the capital gearing ratio, you got it as one. That means your equity funds are equal to your fixed interest and dividend bearing securities. So in that case is basically we can say that it is more than the average. So you are basically your risk will be lower. And I'll have to deduct from 12%. So let's go on with first computation of yield. Let's calculate yield first. I need yield per share. Be careful with that. Now how do I calculate yield? Yield is equal to point number C. 50% of profit distributed and 5% of undistributed profits. Now to get this profit undistributed, we have to go back to our calculation where he says that in the second para, lot limited earns 5 lakhs profits annually 
on on an average before charging debenture interest and deduction of debenture interest and income tax so let's start with that i'll start with average profit i can call it as pbit profit before interest and tax average pbit everything given in lakhs and right as 5 first deduction should be for the debenture interest check a 15% debentures of 8 15% debentures of 8 lakhs 1.2 is debenture interest this will give you average pbt interest is already deducted average pbt is 3.8 from pbt next deduction should be for tax how much is the tax rate given to us 40% clearly he said before deduction of tax which works out to be 40% 40% of 3.8 is 1.52 that's it this will give you what is your average profit after tax This is 2.28. From the profit after tax, the first deduction should be for preference dividend because first I'll pay preference shares, then I'll pay equity shares. Dividend on preference shares first. Dividend first on preference shares. Calculate preference shares at ten percent preference shares five lakhs zero point five equity shares. He has given down below saying that last sentence lot limited has been regularly paying an equity dividend of ten percent. Ten percent of ten lakhs is one lakh. If this is distributed to you as dividend, I can say that. my undistributed profits is 0.78 my undistributed profits is 0.78 what is yield check yield is 50% of profit distributed and 5% of undistributed profits now whom am i valuing i am valuing for equity share so the profit distributed should be considered as this dividend paid to him one what is undistributed profits 0.78 considering these two figures i can calculate the yield get the yield yield is equal to 50% of profit distributed plus 5% of undistributed profits calculate 50% of profit distributed to equity shareholder is 1 plus 5% of undistributed point profit 0.78 so this should be 0.5 and this should be 0.036 yeah. 0.39 yeah 0.539 is your answer this is yield 
if I divide it by number of shares, then I will get what is yield per share. I want to start with that. But if you observe, he did not give you what is the face value of equity shares. He just said equity share capital is 10 lakh. That's it. I don't know what is the number of equity shares. So let's assume that the face value of equity share is 10. So we will get 1 lakh. Assuming face value per share is equal to 10. Then yield per share is equal to total yield 0.539 divided by 1. I will get same thing. Yield per share is 0.539. I have to divide it by NRR. So, let's try to calculate NRR. Let's try to get the NRR. To get the NRR, I have two determinants. The first one is fixed interest and dividend coverage ratio, which should be at least 3. Second one is capital gearing ratio, which should be 7.75. Let's talk about this then. First one, fixed interest and dividend coverage. Ratio. Fixed interest and dividend coverage ratio. Let's check. It's talking about profit after tax covering your fixed interest. Where is fixed interest? Debenture interest. What is fixed dividend? Preference dividend. So I'm talking about coverage of debenture interest and preference dividend. But remember guys, whenever we are talking about this, we have to start with profit after tax. Do not forget this profit after tax is after deducting debenture interest. So what we'll do is plus we'll add back the interest. But this is after tax. So let me adjust for the tax even in the interest portion. So what am I trying to identify? I'm trying to identify the profits before payment of the interest. Profits after tax before payment of interest divided by it is covering your fixed interest and dividend. Fixed interest is interest into 1 minus tax plus dividend, preference dividend. It is fixed dividend I don't have to adjust for tax and preference dividend because it's already after tax. Now can I place the figures? What is the amount of profit after tax? Profit after tax is 2.28. Interest. Debenture interest is 1.2 into 1 minus 40% tax. 1 minus 0.4 it is. So this is again 1.2 into 1 minus 0.4 or 40%. Anything is fine. Plus preference dividend being 0.5. Solve it. This will be 3 divided by... One point two two less than three. Definitely less than three. Favorable or adverse? Check check the point given in the question and decide whether it is favorable or adverse. He's saying an error of a similar company company similarly placed as twelve percent, having a fixed interest and dividend coverage ratio of at least three. Am I covering three times? I am not. So that means this is adverse. Because if it was three, that means my profit after tax is higher. If my profit after tax is higher, the amount available to equity shareholder will increase. Since it is lower, the amount available to equity shareholders will reduce. 
So definitely your risk is higher. Your NRR also should be higher. Second one, capital gearing. Guys, you can write it here as adverse. Capital gearing ratio. Capital gearing ratio is nothing but equity funds divided by fixed interest and dividend bearing securities. Calculate equity funds includes equity share capital plus reserves. Equity share capital is 10, reserve is 4 divided by fixed interest and dividend bearing securities. Fixed interest bearing security is debentures 8, fixed dividend bearing securities is 5. So this is basically 14 by 13. One point some change it should be. Favorable or adverse. Capital gearing ratio should be 0.75. That means my interest and dividend bearing securities can be higher. If the interest and dividend bearing securities are higher. Think from a shareholder's perspective. Equity shareholder is at a bigger risk. But now it is higher. Your capital gearing ratio is more than 0.75. That means your equity funds are more. If your equity funds are more, this is favorable. This is favorable. Because at the time of repayment of their capital, he will sooner get the funds than if it was 0.75. Always in such similar problems, you will have two ratios given. One is a profits ratio. One is refer referring to capitals. The first one which we have done was with reference to profits. Second one we have done was with reference to your the capitals there. So one is favorable, one is adverse. Let's calculate an error of lot limited. An error of lot limited. An error of a similar company. is 12 percent adverse ratio risk premium for adverse interest and dividend coverage ratio You have issue add something. Discount for favorable capital gearing ratio. Calculate. You have wish, you need to add something, you need to deduct something. Did Make sure that you are adding one, you are deducting one. Automatically, I will get back my 12%. That can be taken as NRR of lot limited. I know NRR, I know yield per share. Now I can happily calculate what is the value per share. Value per share is equal to Yield per share by NRR. Complete. Yield per share 0.539. NRR divided by 12% into 100 by 12. So value per share of rupees 10 each. 
So each 10 rupee share has a value of how much? Four point five. That is the value of a ten rupee share. Yes guys, read the next one, 28th question. Question number 20. The capital structure of XYZ on 31st March 2012 was as follows. The capital equity share capital is 18,000 shares of 100 rupees each. Equity share capital is 18 lakhs. Preference share capital of 5,000 shares of 100 rupees each, 5 lakhs. Having an equity dividend of 12%. 12% secured debentures are 5 lakhs and reserves being 5 lakhs. Profit earned before interest and tax during the year is 7 lakhs 20 and your tax rate being 40%. Generally, the return on equity shares of the similar industry is 15%. However, this is subjected to, again he gave you some ratios check. Profit after tax covers fixed dividend and fixed interest at least 4 times now. And debt equity ratio is at least 2. Guys, whenever you see a higher debt equity ratio, more is a risk for equity shareholder. Because higher debt equity means more debt is there. More debt equity shareholder, higher risk. Higher risk, higher NRR. Okay. So, if it is more than 2, I will add. If it is less than 2, I will deduct. Yield on shares is calculated as 60% of profits distributed. And 10% of undistributed profits, the company has been regularly paying equity return of 15%. And he is also given one adjustment. Risk premium for dividend is assumed as 1%. So in an in RR calculation, not just those two which is already given. One additionally is giving for risk premium on dividend of 1%. Why do you get risk premium on dividend? If the similar company is paying a dividend of 20%, but this company is only paying 15%. That means if the company is paying lower dividend, they are expecting higher NRR. So, let's start valuation of shares. Same thing. It's just a change in the values. More or less your calculations will be the same guys. Just a change in the values. Like we have already done. We will start with the average profit before interest and tax. PBIT. Given to us as 7,20,000. Debenture interest. It is 12% interest payable on 5 lakhs rupees of debentures. 60,000 debenture interest. PBT is 6,60,000. Tax rate at the rate of 40%, 2,56,000. So, 64. 
2,64,000 is the amount of tax. Oh, we get 3,96,000 as the amount of profits after tax. Out of this, dividend declared for preference shares as well as equity shares. Preference shares 12% of 5 lakhs is again 60,000. He is regularly paying equity dividend of 15% on 18 lakhs of share capital. 15% on 18 lakhs of share capital is 2 lakhs 70,000. Finally, I will come up with undistributed profits of 66,000. Once you know undistributed profits, you can calculate the yield. I want yield per share. Yield can be considered as point number C. 60% of profits distributed plus 10% of undistributed profits. 60% of profits distributed. 10% of undistributed profits. 60% into profit distributed. How much did you distribute to equity shareholders? 270,000. 10% of undistributed profit, 66,000. One lakh sixty-two thousand plus six thousand six hundred. One lakh sixty-eight thousand six hundred. Your total yield is one lakh sixty-eight thousand six hundred. I need yield per share. One lakh sixty-eight thousand six hundred divided by number of shares are eighteen thousand. Nine point some change, I guess. 9.37 is the yield. Yield is considered as 
Yes guys, then go for the NRR calculation, same thing. The first NRR computation, we need to talk about fixed interest and dividend bearing securities only. The second one is talking about debt equity ratio. Second one in the earlier case was capital gearing, but now I have to talk about debt equity ratio. So let's take the first one. The first one is the same, fixed interest and dividend bearing securities. Profit after tax covers fixed interest and fixed dividend. What is the profit after tax? 3,96,000. Plus interest, debenture interest is 60,000 into 1 minus 0 0.4, 40% tax, divided by 60,000 interest into 1 minus 0 0.4 plus preference dividend, fixed dividend is 60,000. This 4,42,000 divided by 96,000. Four thirty-two. Four thirty-two huh? divided by 96,000 is? 10.26. Four point some change. 4 point some change you should get guys. That's 4 point something. 4.5. Somewhere around that. No problem. But what he has asked is at least 4 times. Now I have 4.5. That means I have favorable condition now. I am covering it more than what he has asked. Then debt equity ratio. Debt equity ratio. Debt by equity. Debt funds divided by equity funds. Debt fund is debentures. How much is debenture? 5 lakhs. Equity fund share capital plus reserves. Share capital is 18. Reserves is 5. 18 lakh share capital plus 5 lakh reserve. 5 by 23. He is asking 2 is to 1 man. Where did we get? We are lining up at around. 0.2 favorable lower debt equity ratio favorable for your equity shareholders actually whenever it, the debt funds are so low NRR is so high reason is debt funds are always cheaper than equity if you go for this normally you will have a higher better capital structure so whenever we are talking about this so let's go for the NRR NRR of this company XYZ Yeah, NRR of a similar company within the same industry of XYZ is already given to us as 15 Let's start then First case, I have a favorable discount for favorable interest and dividend coverage ratio. Favorable interest and dividend coverage, I'll deduct one. Favorable debt equity I'll deduct one. But one last adjustment he said risk premium for dividend. Risk premium for dividend. He directly gave you the adjustment for this can be taken as 
So your NRR will come up to 14%. Not really fond of 14%, then deduct 0 0.5, 0 0.5, add 1, you'll get back 15. It's anyways an assumed figure. You can't give a perfect value for that. Calculate yield per share. Each share is 100 rupees now. Yield per share is 9.37. NRR is 14%. Identify the value per share. Yes guys, that will give you value per share of 66.93. Let's turn to the next question. The following average balance sheet of 31st March 2012 pertains to Glorious Limited. So in Glorious Limited, if you observe, I have 180 lakh equity shares of 10 rupees fully paid up. 90 lakh equity shares of 10 rupees, 8 paid up. And then, I have 150 lakh equity shares of 5 rupees each fully paid up. There is no partly paid share in that 5 rupees. There is only one partly paid share which is 10 rupees, 8 paid up. The balance of assets are given to you. You are required to calculate the following for each of the 3 categories of equity shares. That means I need to calculate for 10 rupees fully paid up, 10 rupees, 8 paid up and 5 rupees fully paid up. Find out the intrinsic value on the basis of book value of the assets and liabilities including goodwill and also value per share on the basis of dividend yield. The normal rate of dividend of the concerned industry is 15% where the glorious limited is paying a dividend at the rate of 20% on an average over the last 4 years and is expected to maintain the same for the next few years. And the third one to calculate on the basis of average EPS. If the EPS earn, if the company earned 1371 lakhs as profit after tax in 31st March 2012, which can be considered as a normal by the company and the average EPS of the same industry for a 10 rupee share is 2. So, 3 valuations. 1. Net assets. Next, dividend yield. Next, earnings yield. So, let's start calculating. First, start with intrinsic value. To calculate intrinsic value per share, I need to get net assets attributable to equity shareholder. My first calculation is Intrinsic value per share. To calculate intrinsic value per share, I need to start with assets. All rupees in lakhs. Start one by one. First is said, including goodwill is said. I'll start with goodwill itself. 420. Other fixed assets. 11,166. Current assets. Two nine one zero 
loans and advances Nine thirty-three. Miscellaneous expenses, anyways, there is no realizable value. Wouldn't be considering that. Outside liabilities. First one. Provisions. Provisions are 960. Current liabilities 1242. Secured loan 4500. That's it. Outside liabilities. Considering A and B, I can calculate what is my net assets. Total of your assets. Net assets is 8727 guys. Now I'll make some assumption. If I make an assumption saying that the calls will be made in near future, then I have to add the 2 rupees on 90 lakh shares. Or if you make an assumption that calls will not be made in near future, then I don't have to add that. What we'll do? We'll make both. We'll try to do both. Anyways, my calculations still here are the same. From here, I'll start splitting. I'll maintain two columns. Assumption number one and number two. First one, net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Assumption number one, I'm considering calls will be made in near future. And assumption number two, Calls will not be made in near future. Hello. Fill it up. In the first case, when I am assuming that the calls will be made in near future, I can't stop with 8727. I have to add along with 8727 something called as Calls on shares or unpaid calls on shares. What are the calls on shares? Check. How many partly paid shares are there? 90 lakh shares which are 8 paid up. 90 into 2 is unpaid calls. 180. If I take the second assumption, nothing to be added. So your net assets attributable to equity shareholders will be 8907 and 8727 Number of equity shares Come on, first case A 180 lakh shares of 10 rupees so guys, let me say these are number of equity shares of rupees 10. Okay, so I'm, I have to get equivalent share for 5. 
In the first case, I'll take 180 lakh shares which are fully paid up. Partly paid share ups or shares also I'll consider at same value 90 lakhs because I am adding already calls on shares plus what about this 150 lakh shares of 5 rupees so if I have to consider 10 rupee share then I'll have to divide that 150 by 2 but whenever you are considering assumption number 2 total paid up value divided by 10 total paid up value 1800 720 and 750 the total paid up value is I think it is 3270 divided by 10 here I get 327 shares in the first case I get 270 plus 75 345 shares I hope that's right So calculate value per share, value per share of rupees 10 each fully paid up net assets divided by number of shares. 98907 divided by 345 8727 oh you got a 10 rupee share let's try to identify even partly paid shares now value per share assumption number one assumption number two separately let me calculate now first rupees 10 fully paid up we got this values rupees 10 fully paid up is 25.82 in assumption number one and assumption number 2 it is 26.688 rupees 10 share 8 paid up if I am taking assumption number 1 then I am saying that the calls will be made so my 8 rupees share is 25.82 minus 2 that is nothing but 23.82 but when I am assuming that the call will not be made, then I have to take proportionate valuation into 8 by 10. Hmm? 21.35. Then rupees 5 fully paid up. Both cases I will have to take a proportionate valuation because there is no partly paid amount in this. 25.82 is 10 rupee share into 5 by 10 12.91 I guess yeah. 26.688 into 5 by 10 13.344 this is it I have three classes of shares 110 fully paid up, 110 8 paid up, 15 fully paid up. I got the value of all the three shares as per the first method that was intrinsic value method. The remaining two methods are damn simple what he has given because they are yield based valuations. One is dividend yield, other one is earnings yield. Let's go to the second method. Here I don't have assumptions guys. Second method is dividend yield math method. How do you calculate as per dividend yield method? Value per share is equal to? Per 
वैल्यू पर शेयर इज इक्वल टू डी पी एस बाई एनआरआर चलो आई नीड थ्री वैल्यूएशन वन टू थ्री ए रुपीज टेन फुली पेड अप शेयर वैल्यू पर शेयर ऑफ रुपीज टेन फुली पेड अप नेक्स्ट रुपीज टेन एट पेड अप फाइनल लास्ट रुपीज टेन सॉरी रुपीज फाइव फुली पेड अप कमन how do you get dps what is the dividend percentage given check the normal rate is 15% while glorious limited has been paying dividend at the rate of 20% over the past 4 years and is expected to maintain the same so he is paying 20% dividend when the nrr is 15 obviously your share prices will be high 20% dividend dps per share each share is 10 rupees so 20% of 10 divided by nrr 15% Similarly here, twenty percent dividend is always paid on paid up value. Paid up value is eight divided by fifteen percent. Last twenty percent into five paid up value divided by fifteen percent. No. This is thirteen point three three, eight point six seven, six point six seven. Second one is ten point six seven, and final one is eight point six seven. That is dividend yield method. earnings yield method value per share is equal to eps by nrr yes guys let's get eps by nrr now check the third point for the year ended 31st march 2012 the company has earned 1371 lakhs as profits after tax which may be considered as normal for the company the average eps of a 10 rupee share in the same industry is 2 guys he did not give you nrr okay you can calculate nrr see if i am earning 2 rupees as eps on 10 rupee share then my nrr is 20% as simple as that so nrr is 20 But what is the NR? What is the EPS of this company? Now, aha, thirteen seventy one lakhs as your profits. Now, whenever you are trying to calculate your EPS, your EPS is equal to P A E S divided by W A N E S profits available to equity shareholders divided by weighted average number of equity shares. Now, you know P A E S. He has given the company has earned thirteen seventy one lakhs as profit after tax. There is no preference shares, so I can say thirteen seventy one belongs to equity shareholders. When you calculate weighted average number of shares, we'll do equivalent number of shares. We already calculated equivalent number of shares as three twenty seven. I don't have to recalculate again. So now directly take those figures. P A E S thirteen seventy one. W N E S weighted average number of shares. 
is 327 equal and shares. Identify EPS of this company. This is EPS of rupee 10 share. EPS of a rupee 10 share. is 4.193 NRR he only said 2 rupees for every 10 rupees share 20% so can I calculate value per share Rupee 10 fully paid up. Rupee 10 8 paid up. Rupee 5 fully, fully paid up. Rupee 10 fully paid up. EPS by NRR 4.193 divided by 20% that is 83.86. No? 20.965. Okay. 8 rupee share. 20.965 is a 10 rupee share into 8 by 10 5 rupee share into 20.965 into 5 by 10 this is 10.483 this is 16.7 that is your 3 basis of valuation of shares dividend yield methods Earnings yield method as well as the intrinsic value or net assets method. Yes guys, let's go for the 22nd. Directors of a public limited company are considering acquisition of the entire share capital of the existing company X limited engaged in the line of business suited for them. The directors feel that the acquisition of the X limited will not create any further risk to their business interest. The following is a summarized balance sheet of X limited 
as on 31st December 2011. This is a balance sheet given to you. Come down below. X recorded, X financial records for the past 5 years were as under. Profits, this is before extraordinary items and dividend. Profits, then extraordinary items. Sometimes profits, sometimes loss, then dividends. Additional information, there were no changes in the issued capital of X Limited during the period. X Limited assets, replacement and realizable value, values are given to you. Fixed assets and stock, data is not given. Because you don't real, you don't replace your data's, you only realize your data's. It is anticipated that 1% of the data's may prove difficult to be realized. Cost of capital for the acquiring company is 10%. The current return on investments of an acquiring company is 10% and the quoted companies with a similar business and activities as X have a P ratio approximately 8. Although, these companies tend to be larger than X. Estimate the value of the total equity share capital of X using each of the following basis. Balance sheet value, replacement cost, realizable value and PE model. Guys, the first thing you have to understand, balance sheet value, replacement cost and realizable values, all three are based on net assets calculation. But PE model is not based on net assets, it's based on profits. It is based on your average profits and P ratio. So, I'll, I'll take that separately. First, let's take only balance sheet valuation, replacement value and realizable value. So, we'll maintain three columns. We'll, we'll place the figures simultaneously. So, put on, a, put on a heading valuation of share. Value Let's place all the three columns. First one is balance sheet value. Second one is replacement cost. And the last one is realizable value. Let's start. Net asset calculation. First, I'll begin with my assets. Let's start filling up. First one, fixed assets. Look at the question and fill it up. First, balance sheet value in the balance sheet, 6 lakhs. Replacement cost given in the table below in point number 2. Fixed assets have a replacement cost of 8 lakhs and have a realizable value of 5 lakh 40. Second one. Stock. Book value 2 lakhs. Replacement cost 3 lakhs. Realizable value on sale is 3 lakhs 20. Third asset, debtors. Book value, 3 lakhs 40. Replacement cost, I can't identify any replacement cost. Let me take the balance sheet figure itself. But realizable value in point number 3, 1% debtors are difficult to realize. So, 3,6,000 only. Deducting 1% from 3,40 or minus 34,000, 3,6. Then cash in bank. Balance sheet value, 1 lakh. You replace also, you get 1 lakh only. Even if you realize also, you get 1 lakh only. Yes, guys. Cash in bank will not change, guys. Simple reason, Gandhi always has same value. It 
there is no change in these values of cash and bank, that is total assets. Then come to your liabilities, outside liabilities, First one, creditors, there is nothing given specifically, so you can take the balance sheet value throughout, 3 lakhs, 3 lakhs, 3 lakhs. He never said I am settling creditor for less than the amount or something like that, for liabilities there is no particular adjustment given. So the next liability is bank code. This also you can take straightforward same figures. 2,40,000 throughout. This will arrive as at net assets. If I deduct this net assets with the total number of equity shares that is 4000 we can identify what is the value per share right. let's fill up the figures this is 12 lakh 40 this is 5 lakh 40. Net assets is 7 lakhs. Divided by 4. One seventy five. This one. 6, 7, 7, 15 lakh 40. Minus 5 lakh 40. 10 lakhs value is 250 this one is 7 12 12 lakh 96 thousand this is 5 lakh 40 so I'll get 7 lakh 56 thousand 180 189.15 That's it. That is the end of valuation guys. As for balance sheet value, replacement value and realizable value. One last model he has is P model. How do you calculate value per share under P model? value per share under P model whenever we have such kind of thing basically we have to do value per share is equal to EPS into P by E Let's go for first EPS. How do we get EPS? The profits given. Okay. So my profits are given to you before dividend and before extraordinary items. Let's take only the basic profit figures. Because there will be maintained in the future. Extraordinary items don't adjust. So whatever is the normal profits, take an average of those profits. That will give you average EPS. If you divide it by 4000 shares. Multiplied by P, P is given in point number 5. Okay, so let's start. Average earnings. Take an average guys, there is no particular trend as far as the earnings was concerned.
डिवाइडेड बाय फाइव गेट द एवरेज अर्निंग्स Sixty-nine thousand two hundred. Average EPS of four hundred shares, sixty-nine thousand two hundred divided by four, is one seven five. Sorry, four thousand, right? Yeah, seventeen point five. Five five, yeah. 17.3 EPS into P what is the P of this company check read point number 5 the current return on investments of the acquiring company is 10% if the quoted companies of a similar the quoted companies have a similar having similar business and activities of x have a p ratio of approximately 8 Although these companies tend to be much larger than X, guys, what is price by earnings? Market price per share divided by earnings per share. Whenever I am talking about earnings per share, earnings per share is based on your size of the business. Simple reason is normally whenever I have a large scale of business, what happens to the earnings? Earnings always increases because you get economies of scale. That means if I start doing activities in ratios of 10 units or 100 units, I might earn lower profit than when I do at 1 lakh units. So a similar way is saying that my P ratio was 8 for a similar company, but they tend to be much larger. That means for this company, that is your X limited, your P, your earnings is lower. If your earnings is lower, your earnings per share is lower. If your denominator is lower, what happens? Obviously, it should be increasing. So this should be greater than eight, because eight is for a company which has, which is much larger. So since your company is smaller, my T P tends to be much bigger. So can I take it as some figure of nine? Then what is value per share? EPS into P by E, seventeen point three into nine, one fifty five point seven. 